Okay, so we've got a patient with a fistula on the ward. Um, what do friends have to do with fistulas? Firstly, some housekeeping. What's a sinus, Ramada? Is this a sinus or is that a sinus? The top one. The top one. That thing is a sinus, isn't it? So what's a sinus? The connection between a surface and a cavity below. Um, fistula. It's a fish, uh, Mickey T. Yeah, yep, like skin and maybe a tubal structure like bowel. That's an example of a fistula. So we've got a patient with a fistula on the ward. We want it to heal up. Friends, stop your fistula from healing up. So what's the F in friends, Calum? Oh, um, so um, F in friends is a foreign body. Yep, so foreign body stop a fistula from healing. What's the R in friends? Ben? I'm not sure. Lana? Radiation. Radiation, very good. Inflammation. T, yep, or infection. Uh, Epithelialization. Yep. N, Ben? Yep, neoplasia. D, Lana? Very cool, yeah, it's some drug, like you know, steroids and stuff like that, yeah. Hey, We've added to it. <laughs> Beat the surgeon. What was I thinking of? I'm not sure. Distal obstruction. Yeah, distal obstruction, and S is bend. Short and stumpy. So let's go through each of those quickly. Foreign body. If you've got, I don't know, some prosthetic material here or something, it's going to fester away. It's going to be a nidus or infection and inflammation, and it will impair healing. Obviously, it's harder for antibiotics to get in there. Radiation, really, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but except know that it's a risk factor and keep it in mind that if radiation has been in the area, then it, it, there is going to be a less of a likelihood for the fistula to heal. But it can heal, you just got to get all of the other um, conditions right. Infection, inflammation. Um, if there's infection happening in here, then it's less likely to heal. So you want to try to control that with antibiotics or draining abscesses, the usual infection control measures. What does epithelialization mean? Mickey T? Uh, so essentially, uh, it's the change in the cell type. So yeah, so like the epithelial layer you know, extends up and down through that tract. Once that happens, it becomes much more difficult for that tract to close. You healing in fistulas means getting that tract to close up. Okay. You want it to stick together and fuse and never open up again. But if there's um, growth of epithelial tissue along there and it has its own lining, then that's less likely to happen. So you generally fix that by you know, boring it out or you know, you know, destroying any epithelial lining on it, if you can get access to it. Depends on the body area. Um, so, so perianal fistulas, that's something you can do. The fistula for a patient with one on the ward, that's obviously not something you know, we can do. And it's not something we need to do because there's not going to be epithelial isolation at you know, day you know, seven or whatever. Neoplasia could be an issue here, but we're hoping that you know, this area is free of that, but yeah, that's an issue here. And I guess that's an issue in terms of healing generally, and not so much as neoplasia um, locally. How does distal obstruction in drugs, we'll, we've talked about drugs briefly, how does distal obstruction affect fistula healing then? Or I'm Callum? Not sure, but I yeah. think it could be to do with backup of pressure. Yeah, exactly, backup of pressure. So. Um, in our patient, this is in small bowel. So if they're constipated or if they've got, say, you know, a large bowel tumor further down, then obviously the fact that stuff isn't going through is going to cause back pressure. Now, some of that back pressure will go back up the upper GI tract, but some back pressure will be transmitted through here. And we know about the amount of drainage coming out through the fistula daily. And to get that to close, it's about reducing the amount of that's coming out. So trying to make sure that there's no distal obstruction. And in 
in our patient's case, there, sh there shouldn't be. We can do CTs and things like that to look at the bowel vestibular, and you know, we saw that contrast was going past the nasalosis quite freely. Um, what does this refer to? Is that the, um, the makeup or anatomical formation of the fistula? So yeah. it's really short. Or it's, um, it's yeah, so if it's really short and stumpy and so wide, that's going to that's going to be a lot harder to kill than if you've got a fistula that's like thin and craggly and it's got a long convoluted course to whatever thing you've got down here, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so it's about knowing that that's a factor involved and then obviously seeing if you can change that factor in some way. All right. Um, we can talk about, so this is all about the obviously non-operative factors in fixing a fistula. Um, in general, if you've got a very inflamed, in general, uh, post-operatively, we all know that um, the peritoneal cavity is quite um, a hazardous place anywhere between you know, two weeks to six weeks following an operation and certainly an operative approach would usually be the first mode of action there and as is the case with our patient on the ward at the moment we're giving TPN and hopefully the fistula heals by itself by controlling all these factors in other situations if you were to consider an operative repair either by resection of the segment um, then that's considered when all the adhesions are likely to have died down in the abdominal cavity and the cavity is far less hostile. Any questions, queries? Okay, good.